Good night. Welcome to this another Saturday Night Live. I'm your host, Conway Cameron. Elijah, in his days, challenged Ahab and his whorish wife Jezebel, the high priestess of Baal, to prove which God was the true God upon Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel was the place that was chosen for this great showdown. It was the normal practice for worshippers to meet with their gods on mounts. Most of the groves that Jezebel had where they sacrifice people where they sacrifice animals were upon mounts mountains grove worship or devil worship and sacrifice was normal in Elijah's days so it was a challenge to see who could light the fire on the altar of sacrifice up on Mount Carmel in other words God was challenging Baal to his own practice of sacrificing upon the mountains which is a great part of grove worship apart from orgies or sexual promiscuity that was practiced also along with the sacrificing of human beings of babies of bullocks and lambs and you name it upon those mounts so God the Creator was not challenging Baal to something that he was not traditionally used to he was challenging him to his own worship God was challenging Baal to his own form of worship in other words it was something that Baal should have been used to doing every time that people come to worship him upon the groves Baal sh should this is basic stuff for Baal so God challenged Baal to do something that he basically would be doing every night or every time somebody come to worship him upon the mountains at the grove worshiping which was to light an altar for the sacrifice Baal prophets were invited Jezebel's grove prophets also were invited how much hundreds of them only one prophet of God was present on Mount Carmel was Elijah only him alone was present there Mm -hmm. Elijah amongst the ordinary people of Israel Jerusalem and Judah so 
So we are establishing the fact that grove worshipping was done on the mountains and that sacrifice was done at grove worshipping upon the mountains and that this was something that Baal this was, was one to for Baal that was something that he was used to doing every time at his worship service simple as lighting the fire so God the creator of the universe challenged Baal to a simple task of lighting the fire for his own sacrifice for the sacrifice that was going to take place at his own worship for what is a God if he can light the altar for the sacrifice that was going to be made to him if he can do such a simple task then what is his profit what what him worth what is its value so it was a challenge and a mockery at the same time that God the Creator was doing who was the true God was it Baal if Baal lit the fire then Baal was the true God if the creator of the universe lit the fire then he is the true God you see God is not f being afraid of being challenged of his Godship his creatorship his ownership of this creation So here they are on Mount Carmel, who made hundreds of thousands of Baal prophets and Jezebel's prophet, that whore. And the prophet, one prophet of the creator of the universe, and the common people of Israel. The ceremony begun. The prophets of Baal start shouting. They start chanting. They start speaking in unknown tongues. They went on and on and on till they were joined by the prophets of Jezebel. And together both groups chanted, they shouted, they cut tongues and languages that were never known to man. And for hours and hours it went on throughout the course of the day, asking Baal to lie the altar for a sacrifice that was being made to his Baal worship and they started early in the morning and they chanted and it went on and on and on and on during the hours of the day while the sun hit the sky and split it at mid noon and still the altar was not lit the sacrifice was on the altar the throat of the creature was cut and the blood was draining out a few flies visited the sumptuous menu and pitched and perched on the creature that was on the altar the noise and the shouting amidst all that Elijah stayed calm collected and peaceful 
as the Holy Spirit minister unto his eyes as he watched carefully to make sure that Baal's false prophet didn't somehow cheat and let the fire it was at this time at midday noon that Elijah got up to help to encourage them to try harder he said shout louder he said cry out louder probably Jezebel uh, uh, Baal has gone on a far journey and has, can't hear you or he's asleep shout louder he was encouraging them he was taunting them mocking them At their, at their mockery these prophets of Baal these prophets of Jezebel start lashing themselves and cutting themselves and stripping themselves naked and rolling and doing all sort of evil to see if they could invoke demons the demonic energy but it just couldn't happen the demonic energy wasn't flowing it wasn't coming it wasn't roaring it wasn't happening nothing was happening for Jezebel's and Baal's prophets the high priestess of Jezebel uh, of, of Baal watched And she lashed her eyes against the prophets for our disgust in their failings and they cut themselves the more and they lashed themselves the more and blood and bleeding. And they were there for hours chanting all sorts of spells working all sorts of voodoo and witchcraft but it was to no avail something simple as lighting your own sacrifice Baal was not able to do so aggressive were these prophets that they tore down the altar in their attempt to invoke evil spirits to invoke Baal to, to light the sacrifice Eventually, when the sun was almost near to set, and the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Jezebel and the grove were tired and exhausted and sick, that they retired and say, Elijah, it's your turn now. And Elijah humbly packed back that altar stone by stone, put the wood back on that altar, put the sacrifice back onto the altar, and said to the prophets of Baal and Jezebel, empty barrels of water upon the altar there was a trough around the altar and it was filled to the brim the wood were soaked with water the sacrifice the animal was soaked with water it was water everywhere several barrels of water 
upon Mount Carmel. A place where Baal should be used to. The formality is something that he should have experienced over and over again upon those mountains being worshipped by idolaters. But not today. Today, Baal was simple what they had made him to be an image. Elijah humbly lift his hands towards heaven and said with his lips the words the Holy Spirit filled his heart with O oh God of all creation the one who made all the universe let it be seen that you and you alone is the only true God so that your people can turn from false worship back to you so that they'll know that you are God and there is none unto you May thy blessings proceed with fire and consume this sacrifice, this altar. Fire immediately came down from heaven. It consumed the sacrifice, it consumed the wood, it sucked up all the water, it consumed the stone, it burned everything to a hole in the ground. Nothing of the stone, the wood, and the sacrifice, and the water could be found. If it was his wish, the Creator could have burned an infinity, an infinite hole in the ground. Nothing was left of the altar and the sacrifice. When we choose the Creator over the creature and over all the idols that we have inherited through traditions of worship whether it's Christianity whether it's Islam whether it's Buddhism Hinduism whatever your religion is whatever idols and gods you have inherited none can compare to that of the Creator. We are still, still at Mount Carmel in our experience in this world today. As to which God we worship. On Saturday Night Live tonight, our topic is idolatry. Modern idolatry and its format. Peace.
Exodus twenty. Speaks of the commandments of God. It says, and God speak these, all these words saying, God speak all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my command.
John 17 and verse 3 and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent idolatry the creator of the universe is the only true God everyone else are his servants and prophets yes including Jesus the worship of creatures as God is forbidden by the Creator no creature that was created or constructed physically or was born to birth should be worshipped as God there is only one God and that's the creator of the universe there are no scriptures there are no writings in the New Testament that says a human being is God there are no writings in the scriptures that says a human being is God that's the Old Testament there are no writings in the New Testament where Jesus has ever claimed to be God there are no writings in the New Testament where Jesus has ever asked his disciples to worship him there are no writings in the scriptures where Jesus has ever told his disciples that he is God. There are writings in the New Testament where Jesus said, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the creator of the universe, as the only true God and me Jesus his servant who he has sent the question is asked then what about who died for our sins It was traditional practice as referred to Mount Carmel to sacrifice human beings and animals at grove worship on the mounts, the mountains to Baal to the sun god. Jesus' murder 
was a sacrifice to the sun god on Mount Calvary it was a traditional place where they would carry human beings and nail them to the cross as sacrifice to appease the sun god so traditionally they led jesus up there and they crucified him as a sacrifice to the sun god it was heights of witchcraft and sorcery and demon theology the day that Jesus died. They killed him. They murdered him as a sacrifice to their demonic rituals to their son God. They killed him in a pagan ritual that Jezebel was so often used to. They killed him. The priests of God were now the priests of Baal led by Caiaphas who bought the position through his influence who was a grove worshipper, a half-breed, sacrificing Jesus to the Son God. It was a pagan ritual that was performed on Calvary. There's nothing that reflects what the Creator is in the ceremony led by pagans. He was nailed to the cross. He was speared through and hung there, and he bled to death. The question now is asked, so what about our sins? And what about salvation? And what about John 3.60? And the answer is, what about God, the giver of life, the creator, the source? What about him? Should the creature be idolized above the creator? Should the creature be worshipped above the creator? There is no scripture in the Old Testament that states that the sacrifice, the sin sacrifice was ever worshipped. There is no scripture in the Old Testament that states that the sin sacrifice was glorified and praised and worshipped. There is no scripture in the Old Testament that the blood from the sin sacrifice was sprinkled upon the people and was used as a covering. There are no scriptures to support the worshipping 
of the Lamb. There are no scriptures to support the nailing and the wounding of the sacrifice to a tree or a cross on a mountain. In fact, the tabernacle of Moses days were nowhere upon a mountain but yes the groves of Jezebel were on the mountain where they practice grove worship of demons and devils and Baal where they practice the worship of the Sun where they practice sexual immoralities and promiscuity. It was at this pagan ritual they murdered Jesus to a cross as a gift to the sun god in mockery of heaven in mockery of the creator he was sacrificed in a grove worship to the sun god One writing says, What then is God expecting? What then offended Lucifer so much that he had to kill Jesus? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service Jesus had presented his body his soul his mind his everything as a living a living a living sacrifice unto God the Creator the Father of the universe holy and acceptable which is his reasonable ser service his life was that of sweet incense going up before God in praise and thanksgiving momently. The fragrance and the sweetness and the pureness of his worship to the Creator was envied by gods that even didn't exist. And the envious creature that Lucifer is he envied God of the worship that Jesus gave, which is which was so pure, so unadulterated, so clean. His reasonable service, Jesus presented himself a living sacrifice unto God, setting the example for us to present our bodies, ourselves as a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. In other words, he offered himself and his service unto God. And like a sweet-smelling incense, Savior to the nostril of God, the life 
of Jesus went up, pure and clean, unadulterated. That's what God is expecting of us. Not sacrificing animals, not sacrificing humans, there is no acceptance for human sacrifice. In the scripture. There was one incense of a man sacrificing his daughter. And that was his pledge. Which God did not require of him. If he had won the battle, God says, I don't want your sacrifices. To obey is better than sacrifice. That's what he said. To obey is better than sacrifice. God is asking us to do as Jesus did. Present our bodies, our soul as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And if your life can go up to heaven in praise and thanksgiving, in your lifestyle to God, He doesn't want nothing more than that. But Lucifer was envious of the praise and the worship that God was getting through Jesus. He tried to sway Jesus away from honoring and worshiping and obeying God, carrying him up on the mount and tempt him. And as many times that he was tempted, Jesus said to him, It is written, and if you take all the quotations that Jesus said that it is written, you can find its existence in the Old Testament. And these are the words that proceed out of the mouth of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written. In other words, Jesus was quoting God's words words bear in mind that in Jesus' days there were no New Testament there was only the Old Testament which is referred to as the scriptures what God is requiring of us is not the blood of lambs and of human beings is requiring of us our obedience to his will, to his commandments. And showing mercies, he said in his commandment, this is a part of his commandment, to them that love me and keep my commandments. He never said to them that sacrifice lambs and bullocks. He never said to them that sacrifice human beings. He said to them that love me and keep my commandments. And this is life eternal. That they might know thee, God the Father, the creator of the universe, the only true God. And me, Jesus Christ, his servant, who he has sent. To set an example. To show them how to reach back to God. To show man how to connect back to the creator. By being obedient to his commandments. And presenting himself as a living sacrifice. A sweet smelling savior. Unto God. idolatry the worship of human beings is not accepted by the creator of 
this universe. Christianity emphasizes the worship of Jesus. Christianity sees the gift and worships the gift and not the giver. If John 3.16 ever makes any sense to you, remember that God, the Creator, gave the gift, Jesus. But most persons worship and idolize the gift and forget the giver. The emphasis must be on the giver. The emphasis must be on the creator. He is the one that forgives our sins. Not the blood of human beings. Not the blood of bullocks. God is the one who pardons our sin. The creator of the universe is the one who erases our sins. And fills us with his righteousness. Jesus prayed in the Our Father prayer. And forgive us our trespasses. God is the one who saved and sanctified them. Scripture says, Sanctify them, people, through thy, through thy. And this was Jesus speaking according to New Testament writing. Through thy truth, thy word, Father, creator of the universe, is truth. So sanctification is given and done by God, not Jesus. By God. God is the one who sanctifies thee. God is the only one that can make you holy. And Jesus, the example, is pointing back to God, the Creator, as the only true God who must be worshipped and obey. He wasn't pointing to himself. There's nowhere in the scriptures or in the writings of the Bible where Jesus ever pointed to himself. Search the scriptures, which is the Old Testament, for in them ye man, ye have eternal life. If we come out of pagan Christianity, pagan slash Christianity put away Christianity pagan slash Christianity to worship the creator and the creator only that's how we truly follow the example of Jesus he worshiped the creator not himself he prayed to the creator not himself he believed in the Creator, not himself. And if we worship the Creator instead of the creature, if we pray to the Creator instead of the creature, if we believe in the Creator instead of the creature, then are we truly following God and following the example that Jesus said. idolatry is what Christianity is about teaching you the worship of the creature if you can get away from idolatry to the worship of the creator that's what God intend for us he didn't intend for us to turn to pagan Christianity
His intention is for us to find Him, the Creator, the Father, the Source, the Origin, and serve Him only. I am the Lord thy God, and there is none unto me. I am the only true God. Most persons will protest but that won't change the truth. Religions were designed to take man away from God into idolatry. And if we can get back to God, the creator of the universe, to listen to him and him only, that was the design of Jesus showing us how to get back to the creator and listen to him and him only but somehow we were derailed we were redirected to the creature jesus to see jesus and not the creator the father of the universe And so we have to go back to believe in God and God only. To believe in the scriptures and the scriptures only. And not in the interpretation and interpretation of man. We are not grove worshippers, or probably you are. But what was done on that day was a sacrifice to the gods of the sun, to Baal. Not to anything regarding the creator and his righteousness I know it's difficult to grasp all this to understand all this Is what's required by God God says I will not give my worship to no other no other none So as we go through this experience of life, let us remember that there is only one true God and we are all his servants, sent by him to do specific tasks and duty but we are only his servants we are not gods we are human beings not gods be still my soul 
The Lord is on your side Bear patiently The cross of grief obey Another time, I'm your host Conway Cameron, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, the only true God, and the Lord thy God. These two.